Okay, let's do this. Let's ever let everyone in and get the party started. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I just have to remember to watch the waiting room. I'm so I'm so bad with that because I get caught up talking and here we go. Admit. All right, everybody, I am just letting everybody in from the waiting room. I am so happy to see you guys face to face. I love this part. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to switch it from speaker view to gallery so I can see everyone. Yes. I sit here, well, you guys know because you see me. I sit here every week and I stare at myself and I see the little comments coming up and I love talking to you. And I'm always like, I, I know your profile pictures, but that's about it. Hi. So, Hello, Stephanie. It's nice to see you face to face. How are you? It feels weird saying it's nice to me. It does. It really does. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Nice so to I'm, be so glad, I'm so glad you joined. I'm so glad everybody joined. I really wanted to do this for everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. I know like the holidays coming up can be, well, at least they were for me, so hard in trying to figure out what am I going to eat? How am I going to handle my family? I can't solve all your problems when it comes to your family because I'm still dealing with my own family issues. But what I could do is at least give you some help in knowing what to bring to your family gathering so that you can eat state safely. And everyone who has started the gluten-free lifestyle, you guys have been posting and making such progress. I don't want to see it. Like, I don't want to see you have any setbacks this holiday. Now it's inevitable. I have glutenized myself so many times over the holidays. So I'm just doing my part, doing what I can to help you avoid that. So this is what we do. Before I introduce Jen, this is what we do every Thursday. So every Thursday at one o'clock inside the Path to Healing program, the group coaching, um, it, what's the word I'm looking for, includes two days a week where we get yeah, together on so Tuesdays it's just us like this and then Thursdays it's with Jen and she I gotta sit up this is not so good I gotta sit over there oh. right Janine's frozen oh. that's Janine's frozen. That's not All good because right. I can't see yeah. anybody. Today I don't want you guys reason. to go on mute because I want everyone to. Oh, all right. wait, wait, we got somebody in the, at the waiting room. So Janine, I'm not seeing everybody so, like I normally um, do. I don't Jen, know why. Uh, Jen, is that you talking? Yeah, I said I'm not seeing everybody like I normally do. So I just have me up here. Usually I see everybody and I don't see that today. So you'll just have to tell me who's talking when you're talking. <laughs> I don't even we'll see do you on the side. I, I don't know how it works with this many people on. That yeah, so why. you might have to change your view if you want to go over there and play around with speaker view versus gallery view. Yeah, so everybody on the call right now, um, you can pin Jim. If you kind of hover over her name, see how this lady is going to make this gluten free um, Thanksgiving. Yeah, let me see. I'm just going to see this view again. I'm going to say pin, and then she'll be the biggest one on your screen. I can't see. But if not, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have a lot of people on. Is. We don't get good coverage here that much. So raise your hands, interrupt. So do whatever you got to do. All right, I just put it on gallery like, so that I could see everybody. Questions, like, get a lot of value out of this because this is for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. I have to put it on that first. Whoever's in this Zoom call. 
Oh, well, why don't they turn their mic off? Oh, no. All right. Janine, are you still getting set up? Who's that? That other person. This is a group called Me or So. And it's people mm -hmm. having masks, but they oh, there you are, Jen. Help the over. Uh, uh, Jen, um, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. I just muted everybody because there's some background noise. So if you would unmute yourself, so that we can, so that I can hear you, so that everyone can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Now it's a little bit quieter. So guys, if you do have a question, just unmute yourselves and go ahead. I just want, there's a lot of people on. So we had some background noise. So Jen, go ahead. It's all you. All right. So welcome everybody. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Jennifer Marks. I am a gluten-free health coach and I partner up with your wonderful host of your groups here, of your two groups that are being combined today, Janine. And uh, we love to collaborate because we both really understand that when you change your plate, you change your health, you change your life. And I joined her group and we do some fun gluten-free cooking every Thursday, well, every other Thursday. And today I wanted to jump in and talk with you all about holiday feelings, right? Deprivation, when that sets in, when you're, when you're needing to jump in and make something that's gluten-free, you think, oh, I, you know, who, can I serve this to my family? Or you sit at the table and think, there's nothing here I can eat, right? So Janine, what, we were going to talk about this together. So I'm not seeing you. All right, I don't see Janine anymore. <laughs> All right, so I'll just keep going. All right, so today I wanted to talk with you about two dishes on our holiday table because when we go, when the holidays sit in, what happens, everybody? We feel like, oh my gosh, I can't have stuffing. I can't have cranberry sauce or I can't have my mom's creamed onions because now I'm gluten-free. And you sit at the table and you're full of deprivation, right? And you feel like, woe is me. But that's not the case at all. So I'm here to show you a very easy and delicious stuffing, gluten-free, dairy-free stuffing recipe. And we're going to also make a cranberry sauce today to show you that you can make your gluten-free holiday meal a success where everybody is joining you at the table. Okay. So we're going to start off with first with our gluten-free stuffing. So of course, when you think of stuffing right away, you think, oh, I can't have this because it's made with bread, right? Stuffing your base is your bread. Well, you need to start with your gluten-free bread, of course. And I cheated a little because a few of the steps in this dish are supposed to be cooled before we move on. So I'm actually going to turn this down a little. Um, when you go to your bread, let's, let's start with our sausage. <laughs> Our first step, this is a gluten-free sausage stuffing. And I know in this group, the MS group, you do not eat pork, you do not eat eggs. So I am using, so you can use, this is a pork stuffing here, a sausage here, but you can use a chicken sausage, a turkey sausage, or you don't have to use sausage at all. I love the sausage because I grew up with my dad making this this sausage stuffing every year. And the sausage just gives it that extra bite. It gives it a really nice extra flavor, a whole new layer of flavor. So it's up to you. You don't have to have the sausage at all. Or like I said, use a chicken sausage or a turkey sausage. And the first step is you wanna brown this. And I did this first because this needs to cool a little before we can mix it together. So I just browned up some sausage and I put it on paper here to drain just a little bit. And what I did was I left the drippings in the pan, okay? And I took four stalks of celery and a small onion, a medium-sized onion, and diced that up and threw it right in the pan with all the bits from the sausage. And then I scraped up those bits and I sauteed that down, okay? So it really smells good in here already. 
And to this mixture, I'm gonna actually turn it off because it's been on a while. I'm gonna add some, and you're gonna get the recipe, so don't worry, you don't have to scribble everything down. Janine, I will send you the recipes right after this class and she'll put the link with the video so you'll be able to grab them all. So we're gonna add some sage, some thyme, and some poultry seasonings to this. We're just gonna dump that right in our pan where it's cooking and mix that up. And now it smells like Thanksgiving. <laughs> so this is really like your flavor base for your stuffing. If you wanted to, you know, if you're gonna make a real, a lot of this, you could double this. Um, but you have just this really delicious, yummy, ooh, if you could smell this, I wish we had this smell of vision right? This is just so good. But I want you to think about something. When you're using spices, your spices need to be gluten-free, okay? Especially if you do have celiac disease or autoimmune disorder, you want to make sure your spices are gluten-free. They are not always gluten-free. McCormick is a great one. Um, they do a really good job with gluten-free spices, as does Simply Organic. Those are two that I typically go to. Um, I'm also going to add just a good little handful of parsley, dried parsley. And typically I will use fresh parsley, but my store was out of that today um, and yesterday. <laughs> so just stir this in. And we want this just to cook down just a little bit and just have these flavors really come together. So really, really beautiful and delicious and mm, smells like Thanksgiving all over here. So that's our base. So your base, you cook your sausage, you brown that up, you put it on a, pa a paper, you know, so you can get the more of the fat, fat off of there, but you leave the fat in the pan. And that's what I cooked the onion and the so uh, celery with. Now, if you're using chicken sausage or turkey sausage, you may not have as much fat in the pan, so you might wanna add a little bit of olive oil just to get things cooking down. And then you just wanna saute your celery and onion until it cooks down a good five to 10 minutes so that it really breaks down and gets real soft. Then you add your spices in, and then we want that to cool, okay? Because what we're going to do is mix everything up. So your next step, you have your sausage, you have your veggies, you have your spices. The next step is your bread, okay? So when it comes to your bread for your stuffing, like my big, big bowl, um, you really wanna watch this because what happens when we go to the store and get our gluten-free bread, right? We get so excited, we find bread and we get home and we eat it and it tastes like cardboard, right? I mean, gluten-free bread has come a long, long way, but still, I really want you to be careful. One, I know there are a lot of eggs in the gluten-free breads, and two, when you pick up that gluten-free bread, you look at that ingredient list, it's usually pretty long, right? So if you have a favorite, then stick with that for your stuffing, because here's the other thing. I went through every, okay, so I've been gluten-free for over 12 years, all three of my children are gluten-free due to celiac disease and gluten intolerance. So we've been living this for a long time and we have made our stuffing. The first two years were a little tough, but then we made it gluten-free. Got my dad to give me his recipe that I'm gonna share with you. And we converted this to be gluten-free, but the bread was still kind of an issue, right? And looking for stuffing mixes. Now, if you go out and you buy a typical stuffing mix, these, this one is really pretty good. It's Ali, Alias, I don't know how you pronounce this, Alias or Alias. Um, the downfall here though, is it still has egg white in it. And I was so disappointed because I thought this was the one that didn't. I could not find one stuffing mix that did not have eggs in it, okay? So that really limits our community right here when you're egg free. But having said that, you can make your own bread, or you can use your own favorite gluten-free bread that you're already using. What you wanna do is you wanna either toast it or you want it to be day old, which we all know gluten-free bread goes day old quickly, right? Um, so I'm kind of using a mixture here today. Um, the other thing I want you to really pay attention to is on the stuffing mixes, if you do choose one to use, 
watch the ingredient list because there's a whole lot of stuff in some of these that we don't need to be putting in our bodies, right? So just really be, be um, aware of that. And I'm sorry, because I really thought this was the one and it still had egg white in it. So that was not good. But I am going to use a mixture of this one, alias. So this, you can buy it plain or you can buy it savory. So if you're gluten-free only, then this, is, this works. But if you need to be egg-free, then that's not going to work, okay? So you want to use your favorite bread. Now, you can also make your own bread, which is typically what I do. I'm cheating today because I can't have time to make another loaf. But I did make some of my sourdough rolls that we make in our house. These are gluten-free sourdough rolls. We do make a gluten-free sourdough bread or a couple of other breads that I make. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll make that ahead of time and then dice it up. So I've diced up some of my rolls in this big bowl here, probably about four or five rolls. So they look like this, they're just nice and small. Um, so instead of, because we made a lot of sourdough bread during the pandemic because we couldn't find some of the breads that we typically used or we couldn't find yeast as well, right? Yeast was very hard to find to make the breads we typically made. So we started making sourdough bread. Well, if you know anything about sourdough bread, you have to start with a starter, which kind of grows on your, this is my starter here. So that kind of has to grow on your counter for a good week before you can use it. And then it gets all bubbly, and, and it grows in there and then you can use that as your base. So when that, when that works, it's fabulous. Sometimes it doesn't, so you have to keep feeding it. You put flour and water in it every day. And so you can make a beautiful sourdough bread with that. Now, if you're making, if you find a bread that you wanna to try to make and it has eggs in it, I would say use your flax egg for your bread, okay? Because with breads and muffins, that flax egg works really well. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, what I mean is if you take one tablespoon of ground flaxseed and add three tablespoons of water, and then you mix that together, let it sit and it gels up. And that is used as an egg substitute. And like I said, it works well with bread and it works well with muffins. Cookies, not all the time. It really depends on the cookie you're making to see what, how it works. Um, but it can work with some cookies. So what I've done with our stuffing today is I'm cheating a little and I am gonna use one of the alias um, stuffing mixes. And I'm going to use about four or five rolls I have in here from our sourdough bread. And I've just diced them up into these little cubes and I'm gonna dump that right in. Okay. So I have a nice big bowl here to mix up. So I have this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put everything together. So we're gonna take all of this delicious smelling celery and onion mixture with all of our spices. It smells really amazing. I mean, I really wish you could smell that. And I'm gonna take our sausage. And again, you don't need to have sausage in here I grew up with this. This is why this dish is so important to me. And it, it's, it means a lot to me to eat this. It just brings back all those childhood memories, right? Sitting at the table. How many of you have ever gone to a Thanksgiving meal and you sit there and you don't see any of your favorite dishes on the table, right? Kind of changes it a little. So when that happened to us our first few years, I said, all right, to my mom and dad, I need your recipes. I, I need to know how to do all this gluten-free in with your recipes, right? So we changed everything around. So if you are not using a pork sausage, you can use chicken sausage, you can use turkey sausage. You wanna brown that up, let it cool, so you don't wanna burn your hands. Then we're just gonna dump this right in with the bread crumbs, the bread, diced bread, and with your, with your um, sauce, hit, uh, excuse me, your celery and your onions. You can see that there. Now. We don't use eggs in this at all. I know before we before we came on, Janine and I were talking about, well, what do you put in your, you know, what are we gonna use for eggs in our stuffing? And then I was looking at my recipe, I'm like, we don't even use eggs in our stuffing because what I use is just our chicken stock that we've made in another class here in Janine's group where we boiled a whole chicken 
with the bones and the meat and everything. You can throw in the bones, you can throw in some vegetables and let that simmer all day and you have a delicious chicken stock, okay? And we're just gonna add this right to, so this is stock that I've had in the freezer from our class. And I'm gonna just pour this over the breadcrumbs and over all of the delicious ingredients in this bowl. And you just really want to coat all of the stuffing and mix up the sausage and the spices. You don't really want to saturate it. So you don't want it to be, you know, too, too drenched, but you do want it to be moist. And because this bread is very hard, we're probably going to end up using all of this. Jen, just Jen, really Jen, mixing well, this together. Well, you're mixing that up. I want to just touch on what you said, because I thought it was really important that I always talk in the group about not feeling deprived, right? I don't want you guys to ever feel that I don't feel deprived. I still eat my pizza and my, my ice cream. And I find ways to still get what I need. And yeah, you need ice cream sometimes without glutenizing myself, right? Or without eating the dairy. And it's so important to do the same thing for yourselves during the holidays. You cannot sustain sitting at your holiday table or your family's holiday table and not be able to eat the foods on the table. You can't feel like an outcast for the rest of your life because, you know, you're trying to heal. I, I know my family in the beginning, they were not very um, open to the idea. And that's putting it nicely. I was in therapy for very long dealing with this to be able to say they were not very open to the idea of me being gluten-free, but watching my transformation finally years later, they're all gluten-free and dairy-free. So it, it's come full circle. So I just want you to know, that's why it's so important. Take your recipes, take your family's recipes, make them gluten-free. And you don't even have to make a big stink about them being gluten-free, just bring them and they will love them. You learn how to make them taste good. Okay, we'll talk more at the end. I'm sorry, Jen, I got off on a tangent there. No, but. no, no, I, I love it. Usually we're all talking, so this is great. Um, so yeah, so what you wanna do is we put, we put our sausage, we put our onions and our celery mixture with all the spices, we put our bread, our diced up bread in here, and then I added our chicken stock, okay? And I mixed it all together. So this is, it, it's, it's not sopping wet. You don't want it to be sopping wet, but you do want it to be, you know, moist. And we're just gonna take our pretty little dish here and dump it all right in and smush it right in there. It smells so, so good. <laughs> and what's great about stuffing is that you can make it ahead of time and keep it in the fridge. The longer you keep it in the fridge, the better it tastes. Good point. I was just going to say that. I have made this. Let me rinse my hands. So I typically make my stuffing the day before or even two days before, and then it's done. You don't have to worry about that on, on Thanksgiving. And... I have also made it way ahead of time and frozen it and taken it with us to other places because four out of five of us are gluten-free. So when we go to a Thanksgiving meal and they're not going to be serving gluten-free foods, I'll bring a lot of it with me. And I have frozen this and brought it with us and it was perfect. Absolutely delicious. Um, so you can freeze it or you can bake it and then freeze it or you can bake it and just have it ready one or two days before. When you take your turkey out of the oven or your main dish, what you want to do is just heat this up again. Um, if you've had it in the fridge, just have it sit out about 10 minutes and then put it in the fridge in the oven for a good 20 to 30 minutes so it heats through. So that usually times out well when you have, um, I'm just going to cover this, when you have your turkey out and then we put everything else back in the oven to either cook or to reheat, right? And then you have everything on the table at the same time. So usually the timing works really, really well. So we're gonna cover this and I'm gonna bake this for 35 minutes. And then we're gonna uncover it and we're gonna bake it for another 10 minutes because we want that top to get nice and crispy. So that's where you have all that good crispiness going on, okay? So, all right, we're gonna pop this in the oven and then we'll talk about some other dishes for the holidays. 
while she's doing that, I also want to comment on um, the spices. Remember when Jen said, make sure they're gluten-free. I got a lot of questions on that in the group because people were asking, well, how do you know if spices are gluten-free? It's a great question. When we say, make sure your spices are gluten-free, it's usually the spice blends that an ingredient is added to make them, um, prevent them from caking together and allow them to pour out of the jar easily. They use, sometimes they add wheat flour. So you just have to look, it will always be labeled on the spice jar itself, whether or not it contains wheat. If you look in the ingredients and it just says basil, just says parsley, then you're fine. It's gluten free, but it's those mixes. When my husband, who was my, you know, first moved in, we combined houses. He brought all his spices over. I'm like, love, are you trying to kill me? Everything has gluten and I got to throw this out. He's like, yes, you got to, you got to throw out my spices. I'm like, are you attached to them in any way? <laughs> so <laughs> that was a little argument, but they went in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and, and that's a great point too, Janine. If you, if you have a household where some of you are eating gluten-free and some of you are not, I see, I usually suggest your spices, keep them all gluten-free because they're very easy to get mixed up. Yeah. You grab you when you're cooking, you grab, you do this, you do that. And mm -hmm. so he quickly learned that my cooking tastes good. Even without his spice blends, I can blend up my own. So that was, that was, it wasn't, it wasn't um, long lived his anger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that that's an excellent point. And then I want to take even what you said a step further, because yes, typically a spice is gluten-free if it's one in the jar when it's mixed, it's not, but I would always check with the company because you can still have a spice that has one spice in the, in the jar. But if you have celiac disease or are gluten intolerant, you want to call the company and check if it does not say certified gluten-free because how the spices are processed might not be gluten-free. So, you know, it can get a little crazier, but typically you're good with one spice in the jar. Okay, great point, Janine. Jen. I have a question. What what temperature do you bake the stuffing at? Okay, uh, 375, 350, okay. 375. Everybody's oven is a little different, but either one of those will work for about 35 minutes. And then we'll, that's covered. And then we're gonna uncover it and bake it for another 10 minutes. So you get all that nice crispiness on the top. Okay, thank you. Okay, absolutely. And you know, I, I started to tell you that when I was researching all these stuffing mixes, and even over all these years, you know, every year you see a new stuffing mix come out and it's like, oh, I'm gonna check this one. They always have eggs in them or xanthan gum, which is something that can also truly disrupt your gut. It's something that we stay away from at our home. Um, it's, some, it's an ingredient that binds gluten-free foods together. Actually, you'll find it in a lot of foods, not just gluten-free foods. Um, it binds food together and it's something that we use in gluten-free baking and gluten-free cooking to bind things together to replace the gluten, but it's a huge disruptor to your gut. So if you are eating gluten-free foods and feel like, oh, you know, why do I not feel great or why is my belly off? Watch the ingredients because that xanthan gum used to be prescribed from, um, from doctors or by doctors to clean you out not a conversation we want to have in a cooking class, but it's something that you need to be aware of. Um, yeah, just wanted to share that little tidbit of information. So our stuffing is in the oven and we are going to move on to another dish that, you know, sometimes we don't think about, is that gluten-free or is it not? And I'm talking about cranberry sauce. And yes, we can go buy a jar of cranberries, you know, a can of cranberries and call it a day, but I'm going to tell you a little secret. What do you think is most disruptive in that can of cranberry sauce? Who wants to tell us? <laughs> is it sugar? I heard sugar. something about sugar. It yes, absolutely. Sugar, 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 sugar. Sugar is so disruptive to our body and especially to our gut that when we eat cranberry sauce and it tastes so yummy and delicious, you're really loading all this sugar into your intestines and then that could throw everything off. So you're gluten-free, you're cleaning up your plate and then you throw all this sugar in and it can really throw you off. So I'm gonna show you a really easy and delicious cranberry sauce that has very little sugar, but still tastes 
Amazing, okay? So we're gonna start with a 12 ounce bag of cranberries. These are organic cranberries that I've cleaned. And you know, you just wanna check through them because sometimes you'll have a bad guy in there that's like brown or a little yucky. So I'm gonna pull those out. We're just gonna put them in our pan here. And I just have a saucepan, just, just our cranberries. And I'm gonna add one cup of water to that. This really couldn't be any easier, my friends. And we are going to boil this. All right, let's go. All right, and we are just gonna boil this and let this cook down. So as the water's boiling, what happens is the cranberries just really start to pop. And so you have to be careful when you're cooking this, but they'll start to pop. Here's a bad guy and break open. And as they do, I like to just use the back of my spoon and kind of just mash them down as it just starts to cook. So we'll just let that kind of hang out here and talk a little bit about holidays at, at, at you know, being gluten-free at the holidays. So with this recipe, we have, how easy is this? We have a bag of cranberries. You have a 12 ounce bag of cranberries. You have pure maple syrup, which is your sugar. And it is not two and three cups of sugar. It is four tablespoons of maple syrup and a cup of water. And that is it. Now, if you're a person who loves that orange cranberry mixture together, you can take, I didn't have an orange, but here's a lemon. You can take a zester. Does anyone know what a zester is? This is this, I, I love using this for baking. And even for, you know, if you're going to make a lemon chicken or adding lemon or orange to a dish, you take your zester and you just roll it across your, um, your, your lemon, your lime, your orange, and then you have this beautiful, oh wow, it smells amazing. Okay, so the rind of your lemon and your lime and your orange, of your citrus fruits there, they have lots of really big oils in there and mm, the smell, okay, adding that to your, to your cooking, to your baking really enhances the flavor. So this is a really fun tool to use in your kitchen. So if you really like orange, cranberry orange goes well together and you can add some orange zest to this. Um, and again, the zest is just right off of the rind. You wanna try and use an organic orange because you don't want to be adding pesticides and herbicides when you're adding rind to your, to your foods, right? We're trying to clean up our plate and if you're buying an you know, a regular orange that could be coated in, in some growing pesticides. And we don't wanna add that to our food because that could be a disruptor to our gut as well. So just another thought, uh, but you can add orange to this and that would be amazing. I'm it really is amazing, glad. actually, Jen. It is amazing because I noticed that I don't have to add as much sugar, as much um, maple syrup. If I add the orange, it gives it that tang without, yes. like the cranberries are so tart. They just they make your mouth pucker. But even if you take that orange and you just squeeze it in there, that also yes. changes the whole balance of the flavor. It's amazing. It's so good. But I wanted to tell you, Using maple syrup, some people are like, it's sugar, sugar, sugar. Not really. The maple syrup, the minerals found in maple syrup are unlike any other minerals that are found anywhere else on earth and any other food, plant, whatever. The minerals in maple syrup feed your brain and they feed your liver. It's actually good for you. It's one of the only things, one of the few things that you can add to your lemon water in the morning. You could add your maple syrup. You could also add ginger. That's about it. Um, but it really is so, it's a powerful cleanser and feeder. It actually gets into the deeper le levels of your uh, liver to help clean it out. And your brain loves it for fuel. So consider where you can use maple syrup in more than just, you know, cranberry sauce. See if you can, I, I drink it in my coffee. It took me a while to believe <laughs> that could be good. But then my husband, the caveman, He's like, no, I tried it. It's really good. I'm like, really? Wow. And so I tried it. It was, it was absolutely delicious. So experiment with maple syrup. Try to get it in as many places as possible. Absolutely. This is why Janine and I work so well together. She took away my next sentence. So that was perfect. <laughs> I love that. We always know what the other person is going to say. Yeah, I think um, I yeah. <laughs> See, we're having a little popping going on here. So 
this this you have to watch when you're stirring it because they are starting to pop. Um, but as this cram the cranberries pop, they just start to break down. And like I said, you can use the back of your spoon to help them do that. And it takes it takes a good 10 or 15 minutes of stirring. You just have to be careful. But you just want it to cook down. That's all we're doing is really just cooking it down. And I'm not adding the sugar yet. I'm not adding the maple syrup yet because I want this to just break down a little bit first. And Janine had great points on your maple syrup. You also want to make sure you're using pure maple syrup. You're not using like Aunt Jemima or any of those because what happens is with the processed maple syrup, it's very, very different than your pure maple syrup. The pure maple syrup is going to give you the benefits that Janine just talked about. You know, this is a healthy option, healthier option. It's still sugar, but it has those minerals that your body needs in it. And it's good for you. As opposed to the corn syrup and the high fructose corn syrup you're going to find in the processed food maple syrups, okay? So think about the ingredients that you're adding in, okay? So what I'm sharing with you today are really just two of our family recipes are the gluten-free stuffing and our cranberry sauce, our healthier cranberry sauce recipe. But what, what I have done this year, is because a lot of people have been asking, is I have compiled a whole book of our gluten-free holiday recipe guide. And I have over, I think about 16 of our recipes that we eat over the holidays. So not just Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving, Christmas, kind of meals in between. Um, you know, things for the busy mama, because you know, I'm a busy mama with three kids and, you know, easy meals that you can make. And I've included some um, gingerbread cookies that have no eggs in them and gingerbread muffins that are mm -mm -mm, so, so good that you can use your flaxseed egg in and they come out wonderful. Um, but if you're interested in that, I'm going to give Janine a link to that. It's $9 for the whole um, ebook. And it's some really great recipes. So you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to make your, your recipes gluten-free, right? So last week with Janine's group um, that I typically uh, cook with, we made creamed onions and gravy. So that's all in this book. And it's gonna teach you that you don't have to have deprivation, my friend, because there are ways to make your favorite delicious gluten holiday dishes gluten-free. And, you know, we should all sit at the table and have something that works for us, right? I want to show you this because this color is just really kind of beautiful. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Probably not. So when it's boiling, it's, it's, uh, it's just really, look at that. It's smelling so sweet and it's just the tart. I love tart, tart cranberry, <laughs> tart, tart cranberry so. So the less sugar for me is better, but my kids like it sweeter. So I do use the four tablespoons of maple syrup. We're not gonna add them just yet. These are still breaking down, but it's really getting nice and thick. And as you continue to stir, it just keeps getting thicker. So some tips, let's talk about some holiday tips since we're waiting for this to, to stir up here. We have a few minutes on our stuffing left. Um, if you are hosting your holiday meal, you can make everything gluten-free and you don't have to shout it from the rooftops and tell everybody. Just make it and serve it and enjoy yourself, right? If you have extended family coming over and they really don't understand that you're eating gluten-free, you know, you can, it, it may or may not be the time for you to bring them along on your journey, but if it is, you can talk about it and tell them, you know, why why you're eating gluten-free, but don't feel it at the holidays that that's the time to do that. I know some people get overwhelmed by other people coming into your house and bringing food in, but if you're hosting, I'm gonna turn this down a little. If you're hosting, you're in charge, right? You're in charge of what you're serving, you're in charge of all the ingredients, and then when you set your table, you can have maybe just the gluten-free things on the table and have a separate section. Look, I would have over here on the side of my kitchen I have a little peninsula. So I would have over here gluten filled foods that other people are bringing in. So you wanna have your gluten free dishes in one section, your gluten filled dishes in another section so you don't have any cross contamination. You don't want them all on the table together because then you'll have some issues because people don't all understand not to dip 
their spoon in your gluten-free uh, creamed onions and then dip it in something else, right? So that if you're hosting, that is a great way to do that. You can be in charge of everything. If you're traveling, a few tips for you is make some things ahead of time and bring them with you. So bring the stuffing, bring the gravy. Don't have gravy from a turkey that you're not sure is gluten-free because that gravy will no, not be gluten-free, okay? So you wanna really think about that. Um, if you are traveling, bring a dessert that you can eat so that by the time dessert gets passed around, you are not sitting there feeling in deprivation mode, right? We don't want any of that on, on Thanksgiving. We wanna just be grateful for our health, for being with our family, for being together, you know, after all this, the past year, <laughs> you know, being together and just really enjoying our time and enjoying some foods that you can eat and that you can enjoy on your plate without no, you know, with knowing that you're not going to be sick. Um, but if you're traveling, if you're traveling by car, it's much easier to make things at home and bring them with you. If you're traveling by plane, then look ahead, okay? Plan ahead. Where are you going? What stores are there? Are there things you can order? Is there, is there a Whole Foods where you can order a sweet potato side dish that you know is gluten-free? Or that you have a, a turkey that you can order that you know will be safe and gluten-free? Um, you know, planning ahead is a big part of traveling for your holidays to keep you safe. Um, what you can bring with you, bring with you. And if you can't, check what's there before you get there. Don't wait till you get there. Or if you're going to a family member's house and you're cooking with them and you're making something, you know, that you really want to make that's particular to you. Maybe you're going to make your cranberry sauce when you get there. Bring your, bring your pure maple syrup with you or bring a specific spice with you that you like to use. Because I have found in our travels, I think, all right, I'm cooking at my mother-in-law's house, but I get there and she doesn't have the spice I need. And then I have to worry about finding it gluten-free, right? So I always say, bring important ingredients with you if you can. Um, so does anybody have any questions about that? Traveling or hosting? This is really, while you're unmuting yourselves, I wanted to show you how thick that this is getting. Look at how beautiful this is. Okay. It's beautiful. It's a great color. You know, it's funny because we have this stigma. I'm going to speak for myself. I always had that stigma attached to me where I didn't want to be that person. You know, I didn't want to be the person who brings my food, my salad dressing and takes it out of my purse at the restaurant, you know, but the more I became that person, it's like my filters were removed mm -hmm. and I noticed that people my father-in-law, for instance, he travels with his pure maple syrup because he doesn't like to go out to breakfast without his pure maple syrup. And, I'm like, and, he, and he doesn't have any food issues. And then I know um, my mother's friend, we were just talking at Halloween, she had a party, I met her friend. She says that she travels with her own salad dressing because she doesn't like the salad mm -hmm. dressing. She uses the skinny girl or something. And she's mm -hmm. like, oh, I leave it in my purse. It's just part of my purse. And I'm like, you know, we walk around going, oh, I have to be gluten-free. At least I did. I walked around going, I have to be gluten-free. I have to do this. But there are people who choose to do this. And now, because of how good I feel, because I don't have any symptoms, I'm like, yeah, that's right. I got maple syrup in my purse. Let me tell you why. You want to hear why? <laughs> yeah. And it just becomes like, you just feel so good. And then the people, there are always those people who are going to give you like that attitude or that judgment or make you feel like, I love what um, Dawn said yesterday. We we're on a Tuesday. She said, I presented this gluten-free food. I put it on the table. It was as if I put a dead carcass on oh, the table. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to come across those people who judge. And I've learned to combat those those judgments and those looks with, Hey, listen, I used to be paralyzed and now I'm not. So if I got to take maple syrup out of my purse, I'm going to do it. And you, you find your confidence and you find your voice. It's not, it doesn't happen overnight. And a, a lot of times it's not easy, 
but it does happen and it feels really good when it does happen. So I, I just want to plant that seed for everyone. Yeah, Janine, I love that because you know what we, we do, we're afraid to speak up because we're afraid that other people around us are going to say, oh, oh, you're so special, you know, or you're being a prima donna. But at the end of the day, it's your health. Like no one else at that table is going to care that you're going to eat that and go home and be sick for the next three days, right? Or like you said, not walk. Like, come on. It is your health. Right. So, you know, if someone, right. I, I mean, I definitely had a hard time speaking up at first. And then I was like, wait a minute. If I don't speak up, I'm getting sick. So that didn't make sense to me. So I started speaking up and then you have your family members that'll say, oh, you poor dear, you bring your food everywhere you go, you know, but think about yourself. Think about yourself. You're not being selfish. It's your health. You've been on this health journey, right? I can wake up and feel great now. I didn't do that in the past, <laughs> right? And I'm still eating absolutely delicious food and I'm not deprived anymore and I feel fabulous. So do not let other people take you down because the the issue is that they just don't understand why you're doing what you're doing or why you need to do what you're doing. And if you accept that, I think it's so much easier to speak up. Um, that, that's what I've learned in my journey. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 really it's just important to understand and to get that visual at least if you're not there yet to see how I was mm -hmm. very shy. I would I would be brought to tears at my family dinners, and yes. you know these days it's it's a complete transformation. So it does happen. It takes a little bit of time. Did anyone else um, have anything that they wanted to ask right now? I know I have you on mute, but you can easily unmute yourselves. Okay. All right, we'll continue and we'll open it up. We'll let Jen go when she's done and then we'll open it up to more questions um, at the end. So if you wanna hold them to the end, that's fine too, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me grab one more thing here. Um, so when, you're, when your cranberries are all popped down, they're all broken up and then you just have this, can you see that, how thick that is? See how beautiful that is, it smells amazing. I'm gonna pour it right here into this dish. So you can pour this into this dish right here and leave it clumpy, like leave it thick. Or you can take your strainer and you can pour it through your strainer and then you'll have more of a jellied cranberry sauce. So then you don't have, um, turn this all the way off. So then you don't have any bits in there it's just it's just smooth so my kids love the smooth cranberry sauce and i like the chunky cranberry sauce so we sometimes do half and half but just use your colander your your strainer here and you just push it through with a spoon and then you'll have you'll have a thinner cranberry sauce or not you know no lumps in there but otherwise it is just really beautiful look at that and the smell again I wish you could smell it. <laughs> it smells so good. It's gorgeous. Yes, I wanted to know. Ready right for Johnny. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jen. I wanted to ask. That's all cranberry, which you just put in the bowl. Because what yeah. happens to the maple syrup? I didn't hear you say anything about that. Okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry. You probably <laughs> missed it. When when Janine was talking, I I kind of held it up and I added it in. What you wanna do is put your cranberries in the, in the pot with the water and bring it to a boil and just let the cranberries naturally break down. And as it gets thicker and thicker, so until, you know, until you have like a paste like this, then you can then add your maple syrup and cook it another one to two minutes and then either pour it into your dish or you can pour it through your sieve here and just use the back of a spoon to, to mash it through and it'll come through for you, okay? And then just pop this in the fridge and it's good to go. Just cover it and put it in the fridge and you're all set for your delicious Thanksgiving or holiday meal. So this recipe and the stuffing recipe, we will share with you at the end of this video. Um, once that's posted in your groups, I know Janine will add that link for you. And 
If you would like all of my or most of my holiday gluten-free holiday recipes, then you can grab my gluten-free holiday guide. And that is ha that has, it's a 26 page booklet and it has over 16 recipes in it that'll all help you get through your holidays. And basically it is taking all of my parents, what I grew up with, because what happens when you sit at your Thanksgiving table or your Christmas table or Hanukkah table, when you sit at a holiday meal with your family, you really associate specific dishes with those holidays, right? And when they're not in front of you, that's when we start to feel that, oh, why can't I have it anymore? Because now I'm gluten-free. You know, that's, we don't need that. We figured out how to make all those dishes. So now my whole holiday table looks just like it did when I was a kid. <laughs> so that just kind of fills up my heart when I'm sharing that with now my family, right? And moving, moving that along. And even my children, my daughter every year will come home and say, all right, let's make the creamed onions, mom. You know, because it's her favorite thing. And it's, we eat them once a year, right? <laughs> so it's not something we're eating all year long. The stuffing, the cranberry sauce, the, the gravy, you know, those are things we don't eat a lot. So we'll eat them at the holidays. So having those special dishes and knowing how to make them gluten-free can really change that table for you. And the whole kicking that deprivation to the curb is what I like to say and get that out of there, right? So when we work on really changing our plate to change our health, to change our life and putting what's on your plate, you know, how are you creating your plate? How are you creating your gluten-free lifestyle and bringing that all along? Janine does such a fabulous job with all of you here in your groups. And I, I have a group as well, a Gluten-Free Moms Facebook group. Uh, it's Gluten-Free Moms Building a Lifestyle We Love. And we're always doing recipes and talking about creating a gluten-free life that works for the mom who's gluten-free or the mom who's taking care of her family who is gluten-free. So, you know, some of us, it's one person in the family that's gluten-free. And others, it's your whole family that's gluten-free and finding that balance and how that works, right? And the holidays, that brings up a whole lot more. So that's why we, we do classes like this. So you really understand how to keep this sustainable because really that's what we need it to be, right? Sustainable. So you wake up every day and you're keeping it gluten-free and not saying, oh, I'll just eat this for today. Ooh, then you regret that, right? <laughs> so does anybody have questions on holidays you know do you have anything that's coming up for maybe thanksgiving or christmas or any of the holiday season like how am i going to do this right any of those questions that we can help you with today feel free to unmute yourselves and ask a question because if you don't i definitely will <laughs> everyone's good okay i wanted to um also say that in this group in this group coaching group the uh, a lot of clients will bring me a recipe and say this is my favorite recipe and I can't have it because I'm you know this gluten thing what can I do and we'll make the recipe here gluten free because it really is once you know the the basics the foundation it really mm -hmm. is quite easy to eat gluten free you just got to know a few things absolutely and the foundations what you just said is so important because we really have to understand what can you have on your plate right and what do you need to stay away from? And then you you want to know what you need to stay away from, but then you want to really focus on what can you have on your plate more so than you can't have that anymore, right? Because that's going to be a big mindset piece. So having that down and then moving on to, you know, knowing where that hitting gluten is and what did we talk about today? Spices, right? That's a big case of hitting gluten. So if you're using spices that have gluten in them, that's not going to feel good at the end of the day. So you want to be careful of that and know you're hitting gluten and cross-contamination. When you're sitting at that holiday table, you have a beautiful dish you brought over that's gluten-free. And then, you know, Uncle Sam comes over and sticks the, the spoon in it from something else. It's like, wait a minute. You know, so you want to have things set up separately. So you're really controlling the contamination and any type of cross-contamination that can happen on your table or in your kitchen and all of that, like setting up your home and your kitchen and all of that. So something I have coming out, I know I've shared this with Janine, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with all of you because I'm super excited. Um, I'm just opening it up at the end of this week, but I'll give you guys a sneak peek that I have a six week gluten-free wellness program opening up. So if you need to be gluten-free, this is going to teach you your foundations of what you're eating, 
your reading labels, your understanding hitting gluten, cross-contamination and keeping on track, but it's also weaving in a wellness program where you're really understanding digestion and how fats and stress and sleep and carbs, how all of this affects us and how to clean up your plate, to clean up your life, to clean up your health, right? To change your plate, to change your health, to change your life. So it's a six week program that I'm gonna be teaching live with 15 people who sign up, it's opened up to 15 people. And once that's filled up, if there's a wait list, I might start a second group, but we'll, we'll work on the first one first. And you know, it's gonna be a great class. We're starting in January, but it's gonna be super fun because we're all together, just like this, and you can talk and ask questions. And so you'd have me right there teaching a lot of information and then lifestyle habits of how to weave that in to create a healthier lifestyle. So it's a great program if you're interested. I'm super excited to, to share it. And um, like I said, it's opening up at the end of this week. So I can share that with Janine in a couple of days. Um, so if you have questions about that, reach out, I'm happy to talk with you. But I do hope you try some of these recipes we did today. Our stuffing still has a few minutes to go. Um, often I'll make, make the dish that we're making ahead of time to show you but I didn't do that with the stuffing <laughs> because we, I didn't have all those ingredients to do twice. Um, but you really want to bake this stuffing for 35 minutes, then take it off. I can still pull it out. Um, take it out of the oven and uncover it. And then go ahead and let's take a peek at it. Whew. It's hot. And then you're just gonna uncover it and pop it back in the oven. Stuffing over here. Give you a peek at this. It's nice and woo, it is cooking. Oh wow, look at that. Oh wow, this smells so good. I feel like it's Thanksgiving morning. Wow. Okay, so now we're just gonna put it back in and brown it up for you know another like 10 minutes and we are good to go. So, like I said, keep it in the fridge or you can freeze it, you know, let it cool completely, keep it in the fridge. And then when you take out your turkey or your main dish that you're serving, this would go in the oven for a good 20 to 30 minutes until it's heated through. You can recrisp the top and it mm, comes up just perfect. And then your cranberry sauce, of course, easy peasy, right? Can it be any easier than that? Much healthier for you. You're not gonna have all that gut, dis uh, gut dis um, disturbance going on with loading your body with all the sugar and you're gonna enjoy it on your turkey or on your stuffing or whatever you're adding it to your Thanksgiving or your holiday plate. And just pop this in the fridge and it's good for a nice week or so. So I'll sit there. So let me know if you have any questions, I'm here to help. Janine, anybody? I knew when I'd start talking and I'm muted. Um, <laughs> I can't see anybody. Normally I call people out when I'm like, I can see you're about to ask a question. So uh -huh. what I'm going to do, is I'm going to pop out and then pop in again. Um, so maybe I can see more people, but if you don't have a question, that's fine. We're going to let Jen go. Jen, just post the picture in the group of the um, stuffing. Cause that's what I do. I'm so glad to see that you do that too. Like I'm not Rachel Ray. Like I try to be, but like, I can't time everything just so perfectly. So yeah, that's fine. You can totally just post the picture in the group. Okay, perfect. And yeah, and like I said, very easy to reheat and whatnot. Um, I'll give all those links to Janine. So we'll put them with this video. So you'll all have those delicious recipes. And if you have any questions, reach out. I'm at glutenfreemarksthespot.com, Jennifer Marks, and I'm here to help you with your gluten-free lifestyle. So thanks, Janine. Always a Thank pleasure you. to be in your group. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. Everyone hang out for a couple minutes if you have any questions. If not, of course, you know, just um, exit yourself. I can't see anybody, you're all black. So if you wanna just unmute and start asking questions, just go ahead and do that. But I wanted to let you all know, um, just in case you weren't on in the very beginning, this is what we do every week. We do this every Thursday, either Jen does the demo or I do the demo for the group coaching that I offer in both programs, the Essentials program, the um, Victorious program, the path to healing, no matter what program you sign up for, you're gonna get the coaching twice a week. So we're on the Zoom Tuesday, just talking, answering questions, going over next steps, 
And then on Thursdays, we're doing this, where we're learning how to go gluten-free. Because honestly, I can give you all the information in the world, but unless you are seeing how easy it is. I know I used to watch Rachel Ray all the time and go, oh, I, I can do that. And now I'm pretending to be her. <laughs> but again, we're not fancy. We're just getting it done. We're just making sure that we know how to live easily so that we're not deprived because this is how you're going to heal. For anyone that is thinking about having gluten, who's been gluten-free for the last couple of weeks, couple of months, one little tiny piece of gluten, smaller than a crouton, is enough to feed the virus. It is enough to allow the virus to grow and proliferate and set your healing back. So now you have to start from square one again and start at your six weeks. That's why I, I hate for anyone to lose their momentum over the holiday season. But again, sometimes it's necessary. We have somebody in the group who consciously decided to eat gluten. She was feeling really well. And she's like, what is this little bit going to hurt? And then she found out what it's going to hurt. And I said, you know what? Stop beating yourself up because your brain needed that evidence. Your brain was going, how bad is that cinnamon, cinnamon roll? How bad is that? You've been feeling so good. That's not going to take you down. So she ate it and it did take her down. It took her down for weeks. She's still fighting it. The next time that happens, the next time she's in front of that gluten filled, delicious looking item, her brain's going to go, oh, no, no, I know it happened last time and we are not going through that again. So sometimes you have to go through the valley in order to keep that peak, the next peak that's coming in order to keep that peak high. So give yourself some grace. Don't beat yourself up. Shit happens. And if you glutenize yourself, you just start over again. But utilize your tools. Utilize your resources around you. Come to these groups. Sign up for the coaching. Get yourself on the path because people are healing. People are seeing a real difference. I'm going to start recording the testimonials that I'm getting so you guys can see them in the group. It's, it's pretty amazing what's happening in this group. And I want that for everybody. So if there are no questions, and of course, just unmute yourself and start talking if there is. Um, thank you for joining in today and taking that step to get closer to your healing or to accelerate your healing or just move the needle, really, whatever your purpose was for showing up today. Thank you for doing it. And you should congratulate yourself because we see how many people are in the group. There's 700, over 700 people in the group. And you guys showed up today. And this is a step towards your healing. So you uh, you deserve a lot of credit. Congratulations. All right. Um, if anyone, no, nothing. Okay, we're good. If you do have any questions, just post them in the group. I'll be there. And hopefully I'll see you guys next week on the next Live at Five. And thanks for joining me today. All right. Goodbye, yeah. everybody.